What's going on everybody? Jhow here, and in this Diablo 3 video, I'm going to bring you one of the best monk builds for non-season play, which also carries over very well into Season 4. Now, there's a couple of variations for this build, and they're all very effective. However, the one that I'm going to present here is slightly different than you'll see from other builds that gives you a little bit more movement and might make it a little bit easier to gear up for. For the skills, you'll be using Crippling Wave with Mangle, Dashing Strike with Radiance, Breath of Heaven infused with Light, Cyclone Strike with Implosion, Epiphany with Desert Shroud, Mantra of Salvation with Agility, and for your passives, Harmony, Seize the Initiative, Beacon of Etar, and Alacrity. So looking at the skills, Crippling Wave is going to be your main attack. This is going to make use of certain pieces of gear that's going to have you doing a ton of damage. Now this is a fire build and Crippling Wave works really well because you'll see on every third hit it also dazes enemies within 11 yards, slowing their movement speed by 30% and attack speed by 20% for 3 seconds, which means that that will help you stay alive because you're going to be using a lot of skills and having a lot of enemies on top of you. So finding ways to limit some of the damage that's incoming is very good. Next up, Dashing Strike with Radiance. Now, this is going to play into your primary attack. Now, gain 15% increased attack speed for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike. That's huge because you are going to need to attack fast. Lots of life on hit, lots of attacks, lots of damage. Just overall plays very well into this build, which we'll cover more in just a few moments. Breath of Heaven infused with light. Now, this is going to help you for a couple of different reasons. Now, the heal amount is increased by 30% of your health globe healing bonus, which is nice because you'll be able to pop this quite a bit to be able to keep yourself healed in those tough battles. With the gear that you'll be running, this will be on cooldown very, very quickly. Now, additionally, you'll see you'll gain 14 additional spirit from spirit generating attacks for 5 seconds after using Breath of Heaven. This will play against some of the mechanics that's coming along with Shenlongs in the sense that once you deplete that spirit, this is going to help you regain it very, very quickly. Cyclone Strike with Implosion. Now, you could opt for another rune here, but this is very good because you'll be able to bring in a lot of enemies at one time by getting that extra range out of Cyclone Strike and pulling everything right on top of you. Epiphany with Desert Shroud. Now, this gives you a bit of spirit regeneration per second, which is nice whenever you drop empty and need to gain it back. But it also allows you to dash to a target, which when dashing strike isn't available, this allows you to move around and have that extra movement. Now, Desert Shroud infuses yourself with sand, reducing damage taken by 50%. Since you're going to have a lot of stuff on top of you with Cyclone Strike, you're going to be at really high greater rifts. Being able to mitigate 50% of that damage with Epiphany is great. Ideally, you're going to have this up 100% of the time, and we'll cover just how to do that when we get to the gear section. Mantra of Salvation with Agility. This is going to give you an extra 20% increased resistance to all elements, which is huge. And it also gives you 35% increased dodge chance. Which, when you have a lot of monsters on top of you by using Cyclone Strike and moving throughout the map very quickly, that 35% is huge, as well as those increased resistances. For the passives, Harmony. This gives you more all resist, which bumps up your toughness significantly, and you're going to need every bit of it. Harmony is a great passive to have and really allows you to stay alive. Seize the initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% life increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. Again, playing into everything that you're going to be doing with Shenlongs and everything that you're going to be wearing, you're going to be attacking very, very quickly. You're going to get plenty of life back on hit, as well as being able to apply several effects and get in and out of danger, and also keep your spirit up to be able to keep your Shenlongs damage as maxed as possible. Beacon of Etar. This reduces all cooldowns by 20%. And this goes back to Breath of Heaven and Epiphany, which ideally you want up 100% of the time. Epiphany is the one that's a little bit more difficult to get to. But this is going to be one of the biggest first steps that you can take by running with Beacon of Etar. 
having those two up 100% of the time is going to allow you to get into higher, greater rifts. So it's one thing to shoot for, and this is a good place to start. For your next passive, Alacrity. This increases the attack speed of Spirit Generators by 15%. Again, coming full circle, you want to attack as fast as you possibly can, as much as you possibly can. Keeping your spirit as high as you possibly can with Shenlongs is what's going to have you doing max damage. It's also going to help keep you alive for all the reasons we've talked about so far. Now, a fifth passive, which also is going to be very important, especially with a Hellfire Amulet, Exalted Soul. This increases your maximum spirit by 50 and increases your spirit regeneration by 4 per second. Now, the more spirit you have with Shenlongs, the more damage you do. And then also having that regeneration, again, is going to play in to allow you to keep your spirit max to do that max damage. So this is one that depending on the greater rift level that you're running, you might opt to run with this as opposed to one of the other passives that we already mentioned. But ideally you're gonna have a Hellfire Amulet with one of these passives on there to allow you to run with Exalted Soul as well. So this is something to keep an eye out on when you're going and trying to get that amulet or trying to configure how you're best going to run your monk. Now, let's look at the gear for the monk and what you'll need to be able to do as much damage as you possibly can, as well as some of the key factors in obtaining that higher cooldown reduction so that you can have 100% uptime on something like Desert Shroud. Now, a two-piece raiment set is very important between the boots and the shoulders. And you'll see on the two-piece set bonus, your spirit generators have 25% increased attack speed and 300% increased damage. That's the huge part. Again, this is a spirit generating attack build, and this allows you to have more attack speed and a lot more damage with that. The other set that you'll be looking at, I mentioned already, Shenlongs. This is the fist weapons that do just incredible damage as of patch 2.3. And it says, the damage of your spirit generators is increased by 1.5% for each point of spirit you have. So, touching on that first part, this is why Exalted Soul and everything else that you'll be doing, including your Paragon points, to be able to put into Max Spirit, the more you have, the more damage you're going to do. So, finding ways to get that Max Spirit, whether it's through the secondary part of an item, is going to allow you to have extra damage, more damage output, and just overall a great asset. Looking at the second part, when reaching Maximum Spirit, all damage is increased by 100%, but you no longer passively regenerate spirit, and 65 spirit is drained every second until you run out of spirit. Now, if you've played with this already, you might know that you can actually keep your spirit up fairly well when you're in tight battles. If you're moving in between groups, you're probably likely to drop your spirit, and then it's good at that point to just kind of either one, let it run out, or find ways to get it back up to the top. Now you can't go without attacking because you will die. So battling Shenlongs is a give and take. And with what we've talked about so far with the skills and everything else that you're going to be doing, it's going to allow you to bump up your spirit generation pretty decently to be able to keep this at max to be able to do that extra increased damage. And then of course playing back to that first part with as much spirit as you need to do the highest damage that you can. Looking at other pieces of gear on Depth Diggers, these are going to be very important because this is going to increase the damage of your spirit generating attacks tremendously. This goes anywhere between 80 to 100% in terms of increasing the damage output of those skills. Also adding to the damage output is a Cinder Coat. You're going to be running a Cinder Coat because on the primary, it's always going to roll increased fire skill damage anywhere between 15 to 20%. So because you're going to be running a fire skill, this just adds to your damage and continues to go up. Then looking over at your Mage Fist, these also increase your fire skill damage. So you can see the fire skill damage, which is your primary attack between Cinder Coat and Mage Fist, is being stacked. And that plays well, again, with Depth Diggers because you're going to be doing a ton of damage and you're finding all kinds of ways to do that with these legendary items that you don't need set pieces for. 
for the helm. One of the things that we need to identify here is the fact that this is going to increase the effectiveness of a gem socketed into this item, which plays very well into keeping that 100% uptime. So throwing a diamond in here is going to increase your cooldown reduction, which is going to help keep those necessary skills like Desert Shroud up 100% of the time. This is the next best effective way to do it on top of Beacon of Etar. So having these items in place, as well as on other pieces of your gear to be able to get very high cooldown reduction will allow you to have that. Now you do need somewhere around 70% cooldown reduction in that area with a Gogok of Swiftness. So having that and finding out where that delicate balance is will allow you to have 100% uptime and have maximum survivability as well as damage. Looking at your bracers, the strong arm bracers are a great choice here because you're going to get that extra knockback damage. You're going to be using cyclone strength plenty, so being able to boost that damage up even higher is great. Making sure and having fire skill damage as well as your crit hit chance on here will increase your damage tremendously. Now, alternatively, if you have a very well rolled pair of spirit guards, which say your spirit generators reduce your damage taken by 40% for 3 seconds, those are another great item to use. However, if you don't have a very nicely rolled spirit guards, then I recommend putting those in your Kanai's cube. That's going to be where you get that max 40% no matter what. So figuring out which pair is better for you as opposed to equipped, as opposed to in Kanai's cube, is fairly easy to decide. But spirit guards in your cube is a very easy choice to make due to that extra 40% damage taken for your belt because you are going to have a ton of enemies on you especially at close range the string of ears is a great choice here you'll see in the secondary part this reduces damage from melee attacks by anywhere between 25 to 30 percent so a good string of ears will help you out to stay alive with all of those enemies on top of you looking at your amulet the hellfire amulet is by far your number one choice for the reasons we mentioned when talking about the passives having those five passives will give you maximum toughness and maximum damage and allow just for great synergy between all of your skills all of your passives and all of your gear so a hellfire amulet is going to be your number one choice now if you don't have a hellfire amulet or one that's good enough or one with the passive then any type of damage mitigating amulet will be a good choice there as well. So having that socket, the crit damage, the crit chance, and dexterity or even fire skill damage will be a top choice when looking at your amulet. Last but not least, we'll look at the focus and restraint rings, which are going to increase your damage tremendously in the sense that when you hit with a resource generating attack, this will increase your damage by 50%. And since you'll be doing this nonstop with your spirit generator, that's great. And then using something like Cyclone Strike often enough, at least every five seconds, will give you the second part of that to be able to give you even more damage. So the focus and restraint go really well here for your ring slots. Now, let's take a look at Kanai's cube because this is where a lot is going to happen. Flying Dragon, that old one that you've been holding on to, especially if you've been playing for a while, throw this in your Kanai's cube. This gives you a chance to double your attack speed when attacking. Again, going back to everything that we've talked about now, your spirit generators, the faster you attack, the higher your spirit goes up, the more damage you do, the more life you obtain back. It's just an all-around unquestioned number one choice now we already kind of talked about it the spirit guards is a great choice here because you're going to get that max 40 percent now if you have a very nicely rolled pair then feel free to put those spirit guards unequipped and choose between your strong arm bracers here and which one is equipped and which one is in the queue lastly of course the unity because you're going to be taking a lot of damage you're going to be pulling everything on top of you and if you can split that damage in any way then by all means this is the best way to do it now if you want to go full glass cannon try something like a convention of elements but for most people especially with that type of damage incoming you're definitely going to need a unity at high greater rift levels Looking at your legendary gems, the Gogok of Swiftness is a great choice here because it will help your cooldown reduction if you're missing those extra few percentile points. Now, you could debate on the order of these, but the three that you'll be using are the three that you'll want. So the Gogok is a great one there to be able to have 100% uptime on that Desert Shroud. 
Next is the Bane of the Trapped, and this is going to help because you'll be having that aura around you, which will apply a control impairing effect to the enemies, as well as every other skill that you're running. This is going to boost the damage that you do against them. Since this is a wide radius and you'll be using Cyclone Strike, everything that you hit will have some type of extra damage amplified against them by using Bane of the Trapped. And lastly, since you're going to be using the Spirit Generating Attack, Simplicity Strength is another no-brainer for your third one because this increases the damage of your primary skills and it also heals you. That's the biggest part. Once you get it to level 25, being able to get that extra 2% of max life on hit, especially when you're attacking as fast as you are, is a great choice. So you can see the three here are really hard to stray away from. If you're playing Season 4, then you might opt for something like a Band of the Stricken, but these three are great choices. To recap, your gear and skill choices all have great synergy when working together because that max fire damage as well as your max attack speed that you can get out of it as well as the really high cooldown reduction are all necessary elements of this build. A few very important things to note is that on your fist weapons, this is the best place to roll cooldown reduction on them because you can roll up to 10% cooldown reduction on both weapons. Also having nice life on hit there will help you out to stay alive, to do plenty of damage, and then return it back to you. Then also making sure that you roll cooldown reduction on both your shoulders and gloves will help that cooldown reduction get to where you need it to be to have that 100% uptime on something like Desert Shroud. And of course, you're infused with light. As mentioned earlier, the Hellfire Amulet for this build is one of the builds that absolutely 100% needs a Hellfire Amulet. So when you're looking for gear, this is a great choice to be able to push those high greater rift levels. If you're not pushing for those top tier levels, you might opt to go around this. But for max toughness and max damage, this is just too good to pass up. When you're looking at your skills, Crippling Wave with Mangle will allow you to get in there, do plenty of attacks, and also stun them and slow their attack speed to be able to help defend yourself and then of course do plenty of damage in the meantime. Now, as mentioned before, Epiphany with Desert Shroud. If you have this up 100% of the time, this does give you a dash ability. If you're looking at Quinn's video, who is one of the best monk players in the world, he opted not to run with Dashing Strike, and that is a good choice. He ran with another option here, which is not a bad idea at all. For most players, you might find that Dashing Strike will work better for you. It's good to get in and out of danger, as well as move through maps pretty quickly. The dash on this is much longer than the dash on Epiphany, but it is one of those things that you can trade in and out. You can feel free to watch his video as well because he is one of the premier players in Diablo that allows you to learn a lot from. So that's it for this Diablo 3 Monk Guide. If you're looking for more Diablo content as well as other gaming content, be sure and subscribe. Don't forget to share this with your friends. And if you like the build or you like the video, feel free and hit that like button below as well.